Hi, I'm Paula Pant from AffordAnything.com, and you're watching GoTerran TV. Hey everybody, happy Monday, June the 22nd. Welcome to today's GoTerran TV show. And as you can see side by side, we're welcoming Paula Pant from AffordAnything.com. Paula, thank you so much for coming on today's GoTerran Skype interview. Thanks for having me on. I'm really excited to be here. Well, we love having you here. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to tell the people out there just to introduce uh, you in case uh, they're not aware. But I went to your website and did a little research. And um, Paula, you know, uh, if, if they go to your website, they could see you're a globetrotter, entrepreneur, investor. You've traveled to 32 countries. You own six, or I guess now seven, rental property units. And, uh, quote, you are your own boss and live on your own terms. I love it. And so uh, if you could just go ahead and start and maybe briefly tell everyone out there a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and how we got here. Absolutely. Well, that's a big question. Who am I? Very where am I? Living. How do we get here? All right. <laughs> got got 45 hours <laughs> uh, in a nutshell I used to be just like everybody else in that I uh, had graduated from college and got a nine-to-five job um, mm -hmm. and because I thought that's what you're supposed to do that's what you're always taught right and right. I actually unlike a lot of people I actually really enjoyed my job I didn't get paid very much I started at a salary of 21,000 a year so basically peanuts um, but I, I loved what I did, I loved the work itself, I loved the people I worked with, so with the exception of the pay, it was otherwise a very good job. Mm -hmm. And it was something that I might have stayed with, except for the, the tiny detail that ended up being not so tiny, that I couldn't just go travel to Argentina for six months on a whim, or I couldn't just fly to Brazil anytime I wanted to and stay for however long I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't, you know, go to Europe or Italy or you get the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, and sure. that really bothered me. I wanted to be able to do that. I've always been interested in traveling to other countries and um, just exploring the rest of the world. That was a huge priority in my life. And knowing that I had two weeks vacation a year was just not a situation I wanted to be in. Mm -hmm. So I spent three years saving up a bunch of money. I, sh I say a bunch. I saved up about about twenty-five to $30,000. That is a lot. That is uh, a lot. And then I quit my job in 2008 and uh, spent the next two, a little over, almost two and a half years traveling the world. That's awesome. And That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and when I returned from that trip, I didn't want to get a job again. I didn't really have a plan. I wasn't sure what I would do next, but I just didn't want to go back into the workforce and have to wake up at strictly 8 o'clock every morning to an alarm and fight traffic mm -hmm. and sit at a desk under fluorescent light bulbs with a cubicle with terrible coffee in the coffee maker <laughs> it just ugh, that just sounded you know after having backpacked through Cambodia and Thailand and all these amazing places that was the last thing I wanted to do and so I asked myself how can I avoid needing to go back into the traditional workforce mm -hmm. Um, and so I started freelancing, uh, freelance writing, uh, which is traditionally also not a very well-paid job. I managed to make enough money doing it that I could support myself. And in the beginning, I thought, this is amazing. Uh, I don't ever have to have a boss. And then after a while of doing that, I realized this is the first step, but it's not the last. Mm -hmm. uh, the next step is to grow investments to the point where I don't actually have to trade my time for money. And so I began taking uh, some of the money that I was making from my quote unquote day job as a self-employed writer and investing that into real estate. And I started with just one house. I started with uh, a three unit building, so it's a, a triplex. Um, and I live in one of the units with roommates and rent out the other two. So it was very frugal, very hand to mouth. In the beginning I was doing a lot of the repair work myself. My boyfriend and I were both doing that ourselves. Mm -hmm. And um, and we gradually we scaled. So after that first house we then bought a second and a third and a fourth and now we're up to seven rental units. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so that pretty much brings us to where we are today. At this point the income just from our rental properties alone, the net income after expenses, is enough to be able to cover all of our expenses. So we don't have to work 
if we don't want to. I mean, I, I choose to because I'm a writer and I'm a blogger and a teacher and I, I feel called to that and I enjoy it. I enjoy being on, on this Skype interview with you right now, even though I consider this work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I like doing it, but I know that I don't have to. I don't have to be doing this Skype interview for money. Yeah, that's wonderful. You know, um, and Paula, that, that was uh, really informative. You know, I, I think a lot of viewers can take uh, a lot of that, uh, you know, especially considering myself, I, I have a lot of uh, in common with you. I know how that is to quit your day job, nine to five, and do what you, you know, want to do and write your own ticket. And uh, uh, it, it's definitely appropriate for us to bring up uh, how you and I got linked up here. And we got to give a shout out to Joe uh, Saul Cihai over there in Texarkana, Texas. Uh, he's the one that connected us. And uh, in fact, um, you were on a podcast last month on his Stacking Benjamins, and mm -hmm. actually we're on a roundtable with my father, uh, Timothy Hoff. I don't know if you were aware of that, uh, but ah, uh, my dad, that. yeah, he's the one that actually initially got me and uh, Joe um, connected. And so uh, from then, you know, that's the beautiful thing about these things. They just build from there. But you were on there, uh, the, the roundtable, and, and you guys were talking about uh, investments. And uh, that's my father's passion. So, um, you know, uh, so again, uh, we got to say hi to Joe and my dad if they're watching. But also, uh, let me ask you this, Paula, because uh, uh, my dad uh, wanted to find out. He was very interested about this. This is my next question to you. You're going to be mm -hmm. a speaker at something coming up in a convention, FinCon. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. That, that's impressive because uh, uh, that, that is very, very impressive. I looked at their website and looked it up. It's coming. Is that in the fall sometime, uh, September? That is in S September. Okay, that's, that's in September in Charlotte, North Carolina, September 2015. That's right. I, I saw that, yeah. Now, uh, can you tell us about this, a little bit about uh, how that happened? Sure. Well, FinCon is a conference. It stands for the Financial Bloggers Conference. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, developed in 2011 by a man named Philip Taylor, okay. uh, who's commonly known as PT, is his, his nickname. Uh, okay. So he started it. The first FinCon was in 2011 in Schaumburg, Illinois. Uh, and I, I went to that one. And so I've been to every FinCon since the inception. This will be my fifth. Very cool. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's been growing. The conference itself has been growing significantly ever since it launched. Uh, that first year, we were just like a couple of people huddled in a tent somewhere out <laughs> in the skirts of Chicago, you know. And now it's this big, full conference with like, I think maybe four, don't quote me on this, maybe four or five hundred people. I'm not entirely sure of the number, but, you know, definitely a lot more people than there were in the beginning. And yeah. it's just, it's become a very professional, very well-respected conference. So huge kudos to, to PT for mm -hmm. putting all this together. Um, he's worked very, very hard on it. And so I've spoken at FinCon uh, every year, since, excluding the first year, every year since. So I've spoken at the 2012, 2013, 2014, and this will be my fourth time speaking there. Oh, okay, okay, that's excellent. And it's a different topic every time, so. Uh, wow, do you know your topic uh, that you're gonna be talking on this year yet? Yes, this year I will be speaking on the topic of growing your email subscriber list. So my blog, affordanything.com, um, a year ago at this time I had about 3,000 email subscribers, and right now I have more than 13,500. That is so, awesome, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be talking about how to triple your email subscribers, how to gain 10,000 email subscribers in a year, or at least how I did it. Well, right there Hopefully is the reason. lessons that other people can take away. Yeah, I, I love it. I mean, uh, selfishly for myself, that's a reason for me to go. Uh, that, that's excellent. I, uh, I was curious about that. I used to do a written uh, email subscription uh, using Constant Contact. Um, I tried it for, I think, about a year, but for some reason, um, yeah, I... I um, I just didn't continue, but I would definitely be interested in uh, learning uh, from how you said thirteen and a half thousand subscribers. Uh, wow, that's that's unbelievable. Uh, well, that leads me right into my next question. Then, can you tell us about affordanything.com? How did you come up with that, and what is Afford Anything? Absolutely. So, Afford Anything is my passion project. It's the thing that I do that I love the most. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a website that I've created. Uh, initially, I created it to respond to a single question, which was, how could you afford that? Because I found that no matter what I was doing in my life, mm -hmm. people kept asking me that question. They kept saying, well, how can you afford it? Uh, and that really began when I started traveling. A lot of my friends would say, I'd love to travel, but I can't afford it. Right, right, um, right. 
And it was funny because remember, as I said, my starting salary was $21,000 a year. And so that was in 2005. Somebody asked me what that would be today adjusted for inflation. Today, that would be the equivalent of $24,600 per year. So not a lot of money uh, to be living on, to be supporting yourself on. Uh, and despite that, you know, I hustled. Uh, I worked side jobs during the evenings and weekends to bring in even more income. I lived in a studio apartment. I didn't, um, for a long time, I didn't have a car. I just walked everywhere. And when I did buy a car, it was a $400 car. Mm, wow. Uh, and so, you know, I, and, and that's not to say, so my blog isn't about extreme frugality because I don't believe in that. I believe in having this mindset that's very focused around abundance and about creation. So you're not going to hear me talk about clipping coupons or pinching pennies or bisecting dryer sheets so that you can double the value of each box. You know, like I just, <laughs> I don't do that. I have a huge amount of respect for people's time because mm -hmm. my time is the most valuable asset in my own life. And I really focus on the possibilities that lay ahead of you if you can think big, leverage your time, be frugal as a stepping stone, uh, as, you know, as that necessary foundation, but then build upon your frugality by becoming a real estate investor or quitting your job to travel the world for a year or starting your own business or, or doing whatever it is that you want to do, whatever that goal is for you. That's awesome. I love it. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's great. I think that'll inspire a lot of people watching. Uh, I, I can relate to the frugality and coupon clipping, and I use this app called Re Retail Me Not. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's, you know, one of those people watching, they probably have used something similar. Um, but yeah, so I could definitely relate to that. Um, how about this, Paula? Uh, switching gears, can you tell us about, you're the owner of a company called Catalyst Digital Marketing? Mm-hmm. Can you tell us about what that is and what that entails? Sure. So that is my, my online business. Um, it's basically a company that uh, helps other clients with their blog and social media marketing needs. Mm -hmm. And so if you run a small business and you're trying to engage more people on the internet, mm -hmm. um, you would come to us and we would help you do that. So. Um, it really it started in response to people reaching out to me after I'd started affordanything.com. People started reaching out to me and saying, well, how did you grow your blog? Um, how did you develop a readership? How did you develop a following? How do you have these, how do you have these subscribers? How do you have these, you know, all of these thousands of people following you on Twitter? And so, um, you know, I, it was funny because I didn't actually intend to start that company and I don't really promote it that much. Mm -hmm. uh, the people who need it find it. So, yeah. And that's your best people that you can have referred to, too, the people that are really interested rather than going out and selling it. To, that, that, I, I find that with what I do as well. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's tr tremendous. And, and right now, uh, you're out in the greater Atlanta area, is that correct? Uh, for the moment, yes. Although yeah. I am uh, not going to be here for that much longer. But I can't tell you more than that yet because I'm still waiting for some details to be confirmed. Okay, okay, sure. Stay yeah. tuned. Don't want to Tune into affordanything.com to find out where, <laughs> where in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to keep our fingers crossed. I don't want to jinx anything. Well, um, also, Paula, um, you I noticed on your website you have uh, an upcoming uh, podcast you're going to be launching. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So that's yeah. uh, a podcast I'll be launching um, hopefully within the next three months or so. So yeah. hopefully by about... Fall 2015, maybe right around the time that that FinCon happens, All right. uh, and that will be, it'll be a podcast about the intersection, very much like Afford Anything is. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be a podcast about the intersection between money and freedom. So, how do you use money to design the type of life that you want to live? How do you use money to create passive income? How do you, um, you know, how does money? operate as a tool that serves you rather than you serving it oh, you know wow. and I guess I say that that philosophically that's what the podcast is about but mm -hmm. each particular episode we're just sort of gonna take it as it comes you know they'll be light they'll be fun uh, we're just there to like get on the microphone and have fun and I have a, a super secret co-host who will be co-hosting it with me but I can't tell you who that is either oh cool I'll be excited to uh, find out um, how, do you know how often the podcast is going to be about, roughly, like what you're aiming for? 
Uh, we're not sure. We're thinking probably the first month. The first 30 days, we might launch with a, a daily podcast. Oh, wow. Um, and then, but just for that initial 30 day period, and then after that, we might go to once a week. But again, this is all up in the air. I mean, that's, that's down the road. Wow, you, you've got so much uh, ahead of you. Like, uh, how do you keep such a busy schedule and be able to maintain it on a, a, you know, just within a limited amount of hours in a day? Like, how are you able to do all this? Well, I'm a big fan of building a team. So when I first started investing in real estate and building businesses, I was trying to do everything myself. And I was just burned out and exhausted. And just I was just spinning my wheels. I was in what, um, what efficiency experts know as the do loop, where you just get caught up in the doing cycle. Mm -hmm. and so eventually, once I realized that, I began focusing on uh, first eliminate, then automate and then delegate. So eliminate the things that are not necessary, automate anything that you can automate, and then delegate the rest. So that my time is focused on the most high level stuff, move, pushing that ball forward. Um, and the day to day execution of a lot of these tasks um, go to my team, you know? So, yeah. That's great. That's how I do it. <laughs> that's really good advice. I like that. Uh, that's one of the biggest challenges I have for myself uh, as well. And I'm sure a lot of people watching too can relate to that. Um, I, as far as you call in also on the Stacking Benjamins podcast, you're a frequent guest on there. Um, how did that, uh, you know, how, was, how did that happen? How did you meet Joe? Let's go back to him for a second. How did that sure. uh, build? Uh, Joe and I have met at FinCon, the Financial Bloggers Conference. Ah, uh, gotcha. We've known each other for a few years. Yeah. Uh, um, and he used to have a blog. He he won't tell you this, but he's an amazing writer. Oh, very okay. good writer. Um, and so back in the days when he used to write and he used to have a blog, we we would always read each other's material. And so when he started the Stacking Benjamins podcast, um, he just called me and asked me if I wanted to be a, a regular on it. So um, I have a regular appearance once a week mm -hmm. uh, on the weekly roundtable. Um, there's a few episodes that I'm not on, but there I'm on. I am on more episodes than I am not. If that makes okay. sense. Okay. I'm on greater than fifty percent of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Uh, let's bounce back to your uh, realty properties too. Um, can you tell us about those, the rental properties that you have? Sure. Um, so I have one triplex and then four single family homes for a total of seven units. Okay. Um, each one falls under the purview of what I refer to as the 1% rule. And that means that the gross monthly rent must be at least 1% of the total acquisition price. And so I, I realize I've just thrown a bunch of really big words at you. <laughs> what I'm saying is that for every $100,000 worth of house, mm -hmm. it must rent for at least a thousand dollars. Okay, that's an easy way to. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Now I follow. Yeah, along. Okay. exactly. Huh. So a two hundred thousand dollar house 2, must rent two thousand, mm -hmm. and on and on and on. And so the reason that I that's my baseline for. Um, I'm not saying I will buy any property that meets that criteria, but I am saying I won't buy any property that doesn't meet that criteria. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Are, are so, you looking to buy some more properties as well in the future here? Uh, potentially, I've got I've got a move coming up for my, of myself moving out of Atlanta, so uh, I'm focusing right now on that and the podcast, launching the new podcast. Those are the two things that are coming up for me in 2015. Yeah, again, I'm sure that's going to keep you uh, busy enough for sure. How about back to the you you have been to about 32 countries, is that right? I have. Yes. Are Actually, there... I just came back from number 33. Oh so, wow! Oh my goodness! I need, wow. need to update the website. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What uh, are there any other countries out there that are on your bucket list in the near, say, two to three years that you really need to get to? Lots and lots and lots of them. It's like the more I travel, the more I realize how few places I've gone. So um, I really feel like I'm not that well traveled because I'm I'm just so aware of how much I've missed. Mm -hmm. uh, and so in August, I'll be going to August 2015. I'll be going to Switzerland for the first time. Oh, Never nice. been there. Okay. Um, okay. Bucket list includes, I've always wanted to go to Croatia, I've never been there, I've, I've always wanted to see the former Yugoslavia, so like, you know, Serbia, uh, Bosnia, uh, that, you know, Albania, that, just, that, that entire region I've, I've never visited, um, and I know it's a beautiful area, and I have a lot of friends who've been there, so 
I would definitely like to, to go there. Um, I've never been to any of the former Scandinavian countries. Mm. I haven't actually been to Sub-Saharan Africa, so I've, I've been to North Africa, but um, you know, I've, I've never been to Mauritania or Mali or Ghana or going further south, you know, Lesotho or South Africa. Or, I mean, there's, that's an entire continent that I haven't visited. Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, there, there are a lot of places I'd like to go that I just haven't been to. I've never been to China, if you can believe that. Huh, interesting, uh, never yeah. Been to, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll make it there pretty soon too. Uh, does any of the, have you seen the uh, uh, any of the national wonders? I, I was just thinking of China with the Great Wall, but any of those mm-hmm. countries include any of the? Do you have any favorite national like wonders that you've seen? Uh, the, great, the Great Pyramids were very nice. Okay. Uh, to see. Um, the pyramids and the Sphinx. They're, it's so surreal because you see it in books and photos right. for your entire life. You know, you remember seeing it in elementary school. And I remember when I was in elementary school, I was always like a very studious kid. Yeah. So, you know, the teachers would assign all this, ho- I would do all the homework for the ancient Egypt chapter and I'd do all the extra credit because I was the kid that always did extra credit when I was in school. Um, <laughs> and so it was, you know, those, those lessons that you learn even in the third and fourth grade, like seeing that come to life as an adult is just so surreal. Um, mm. And just, it's very moving. It 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 was uh, it was one of the first countries. It, Egypt was one of the first countries that I went to when I began my two year round the world trip, and that really moved me in a big way. That's awesome. And you also I uh, noticed too on your website uh, when you had that epiphany, if you will, in two thousand eight, mm-hmm. quit the job. You had talked about selling all your worldly possessions. That include was that at that time getting rid of your car and whatever else too. Yeah, my four hundred dollar car. Yeah, um, I sold it for two hundred dollars. Oh, that's great! <laughs> I had it on the market at three hundred, and nobody bought it. So I lowered it to two hundred, and I finally found a buyer. Go hey, figure. There you go. That was the right <laughs> price then. <laughs> well, what Paula? What would be the one? You know, again, we could go into a whole thirty minutes of this and video blog. Uh, you know. Uh, but what would be, let's say, uh, one big piece of advice you can finish off with here to tell people watching who, let's say that they've got the uh, kind of case of blues because they're stuck in their corporate nine to five job and they're watching us right now, uh, or they, they want to go out and travel, but like you said, they're like, what well, is too expensive? What would you tell those people? And again, I know you can't wrap it up in one sentence or you know a couple of sentences, but what would you tell them as part of like getting a start, like where they should be focusing right now? In three words? mind the gap. So there's a gap between what you earn and what you spend. Make that gap as wide as possible. And the only two ways to do that are by earning more and spending less. Mm -hmm. Those are the only two ways to widen that gap. So do both of those. Do a combination of the two. You know, on one hand, the the low-hanging fruit, the the immediate gratification comes from spending less because Mm -hmm. that's something you can do today. And so what I advise people is to boost your savings by one additional percent. So if you're currently saving zero, save 1% of your income. If you're currently saving 10% of your income, save 11% next month. Um, and boost your, in- boost your savings rate by 1% of your income each month. So let's say right now you're saving zero, right? Mm-hmm. This month, start saving 1% of your income. Next month, save 2%. The month after that, save 3%. A year from today, you'll be saving 12% of your income. That's huge. 12% than what you were saving today. That's a huge, huge difference. Yeah, I like that. That's excellent. That kind of correlates back to what I tell my clients when I'm, you know, working in fitness, when they ask, well, you know, how do I... Uh, you know, lose the fat and you know, lose the weight. And I tell them kind of almost similar to what your um, uh, advice was. But I say, uh, you know, the mathematical equation is to eat less and work out more. <laughs> and I try to tell them like, yeah. I like that mind the gap. I, I'm gonna have to borrow that from you if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I really do. I, I really like that. It's clever. Um, well, Paula, I have thoroughly enjoyed this uh, interview with you. I'm glad that we got to introduce you to the Gotarian viewers and fans out there. And uh, there's a few more questions I have for you before we wrap up, if you don't mind. And I'd love sure. to have you back on, too. I know uh, prior to recording, uh, you know, the people didn't uh, catch it. But I think uh, it'd be great if we can maybe have you back on providing your time, but maybe talk about realty, talk about investments. We could just spend those blogs on those times. But um, Paula, right. if, if um, for, for FinCon, how do the people, uh, I'm sure they could Google it, but how do they, uh, if, if they're interested going to this in Charlotte, 
uh, which including myself, probably my father too, but how, how can they get information on that? Where do they go to get um, RSVP'd for that? For FinCon? Mm -hmm. uh, just, just Google FinCon. That's F -I -N -C -N. what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they, I don't know precisely the URL of that website. Uh, I'm, I'm sure after this interview I'm going to look it up and it's just going to be like FinCon. Yeah. But I'm going to give you the wrong URL. So um, yeah, so just Google FinCon and you'll find it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, that, that's good. And then if they want to connect with you, Paula, um, as far as subscribing to your website and uh, if you can give them all the contact information, because uh, I, I forgot to ask you this also, but you do one-on-one -on -one coaching as well, don't you? I do, yes. Yeah, so, you, yeah I'll go ahead and let you give that info out. Oh, well, if you go to my, my website is affordanything.com, um, and really that's the central hub of where you can find me. So that's where you can read all of my articles, you can subscribe to the email list, you can be number 13,500. <laughs> um, and the, that's a free email list that you can join. We, I send updates about roughly once a week, not sometimes a little less than that. Um, and uh, yeah, so you, you can sign up there on that website. You can, if you are interested in learning more about the coaching, uh, there is a link at the top of my site that says Pick My Brain. And if you click on that link, that's where you'll get more information about that. Uh, if you want to connect with me on social media, I'm on Twitter at Afford Anything. Facebook, uh, it's facebook.com slash afford anything. Um, and I'm on Instagram under my name, Paula Pant. Okay, good, excellent. And uh, also, Paula, we're going to have all that information. In case anybody missed that, you can grab a pen and paper, and we'll take it down here in just a little bit. But uh, while we were um, also talking there, I looked it up. It's I should have had this open before, and so that way I could add it. But it's uh, for everybody watching, FinConExpo.com. That's all one word. FinConExpo.com. That's where to check it out. And uh, might as well tell the date, too. It says September 17th through the 20th. And uh, as you said, Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm definitely going to look at that for my calendar and see if uh, maybe my father and I can make that like a weekend trip. Because uh, he lives in Huntsville, Alabama. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. So we could probably carpool together and go over there. Go it's over not there. that far. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. But, what are you in? I'm sorry, Paula? What part of Atlanta are you in? Uh, actually, uh, well, I live in Smyrna, but most of my clients that I train are out in Buckhead. So um, that's where I'm at right now, actually, recording these video blogs. <laughs> but, uh, but I'll be curious, Paula, to find out uh, what your new ventures are, where you're going to be relocating to, your podcast coming up, uh, and everything else that you've got going on with Afford Anything. So uh, I can't thank you enough for coming on to today's video blog, and I really enjoyed our Skype interview here. Absolutely. I really enjoyed it, too. Excellent. And, Paula, I'd love to have you back on here again. Like I said, I uh, hope you take us up on our offer, and uh, maybe we can have you back on in a couple weeks just to follow up and see how it's going as we get closer to uh, all the other things going on with FinCon and uh, what else. But um, for everyone else watching, uh, as we fade to black here in a minute, you're going to see all the information that Paula just gave you on how to contact her, and you'll see a still shot of her uh, picture as well. So, uh, Hope everyone enjoyed today's video blog. Paula, we had a great time with you on here. Again, thank you so much for your time. It was very insightful, and we loved having you on here. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me on. All right. Thank you, Paula. All right, folks, so uh, stay tuned. Here comes Paula's information right now. All right, folks, so there you have it, the one-on-one -on -one interview with Paula Pant of affordanything.com, and that was for contact information there, folks, for website. Check it out when you get an opportunity and read up about Paula Pant, your new financial advisor. So, Paula, thank you so much for coming on to today's video Skype interview one-on-one -on -one right here on GoTerran TV. Truly appreciate your time and hope to have you back on here again. And to all the viewers, thanks for watching. Uh, enjoy this Monday. Have a wonderful week. A few things that I can ask you to do while you're checking out affordanything.com. You can also go to the website link right here at the bottom of the screen that you see www.gotanner.tv and bookmark that as a favorite to your browser today and tell two people about it and I'd greatly appreciate it. And uh, three more things for you to do before I check out of here. Number one, like GoTerran on Facebook. Number two, subscribe to GoTerran on YouTube. And number three, follow GoTerran on Twitter. That way you'll catch all these video blogs and all these Skype interviews that we're having with all of these awesome, wonderful guests right here. 
brought to you by Go Terran Personal Training and yours truly, Terran, the master of the personal training universe, who always tells you that it's your time, it's your investment, it's your life, everyone. Thank you so much. Happy Monday. We'll see you on the next Go Terran TV, everybody. So long.